Welcome along to Film Talk, I'm Richard Edwards and today we're looking at Blythe Spirit, a version of Noel Coward's classic comedy for the 21st century, starring Dan Stevens, Isla Fisher, Leslie Mann and Judi Dench, directed by Edward Hall. What seems to be the trouble, old chap? I've been commissioned to adapt my novel for the screen, but the words have dried up. I need divine intervention. Blythe Spirit is based on Noel Coward's classic 1941 stage comedy, which was a huge hit in the 1940s and was made into a really well-received film in 1945, directed by David Lean. The story centres around Charles Condamine, played by Dan Stevens. He's a, a novelist. He's written seven novels and has been commissioned to turn his first novel into a screenplay. Now, he's struggling with writer's block and to try and get some inspiration, he calls upon the services of a rather dubious medium, Madame Arcati, played by Judy Dench. She holds a seance at the family home one evening and inadvertently, so you would think, brings back the ghost of Charles's first wife, Elvira. Now, needless to say, Ruth Condamine, that's Charles's current wife, is not happy about this and something of a love triangle, would you believe, with one of them being a ghost, even if that's possible, somehow ensues and all the comedy seems to emanate from that. It's a film that overall I think is very well presented. It looks very sumptuous, looking at the Art Deco 1930s locations, costumes, hair design. The visual presentation of the film is excellent. The performances are okay, but hammy, but over the top at times, but the writing does leave it falling rather flat. Now it's inevitable they're going to be comparisons with the film from 1945 and that had its flaws and Noel Coward wasn't particularly keen on the film version. He was very proud of his stage play and thought Blythe Spirit was one of the best things that he'd ever written. Now if Noel Coward was to see this film I rather suspect it might cause him to drop his cigarette holder. It doesn't really come alive which is quite something for a film that's about ghosts and bringing people back from the afterlife. It's fun, it's charming, it's entertaining. The script somehow though seems to fall quite flat. There aren't that many laugh out loud moments. Not that there needs to be, but it kind of just doesn't seem to hang together. There's no zest or energy, no pace or dynamism. And that's partly down to the direction from Edward Hall, but also partly down to the plethora of writers that have been involved in the script, most of whom are part of the production team too, producers on the film. You've got people like Nick Moorcroft, you've got Meg Leonard, Piers Ashworth, all responsible for the screenplay. There's some, you know, amusing moments, some fun gags, but it's also riddled with obvious setups that are kind of weak when it comes to the payoff. Dan Stevens plays Charles Condamine. Now he's a very, very talented actor, very good comedy actor too. Yes, he was in Downton Abbey and he's known for that, very famous for Downton Abbey, as you would expect. But he's very, very good in films like The Man Who Invented Christmas. And he really does come across very well here as a comic actor. Isla Fisher is Ruth Condamine, that's Charles's second wife. A good performance all the same. She is a very talented actress without a doubt, but the material she's got to work with here is a bit on the weak side. And so, you know, we're not really seeing her at her best. Leslie Mann plays Elvira, that's Charles's first wife who was killed in a riding accident seven years previously. Now, it's a character who you love to hate. She really is very frustrating, very annoying. And you do grow to hate the character towards the end of the film, as does Charles Condamine and certainly Ruth Condamine. Well, she hates her right from the beginning. But it's a performance, I think, that's very strong from, from Leslie. And, and you would expect that because it's such a bad character, such an awful character. And she really does give it her utmost. It, she's over the top, as you, as you would expect, really hamming it up. And it kind of works in many respects because it just makes the character even more awful. In the 1945 version, you think of Margaret Rutherford as Madame Arcati. She's the standout character, standout performance. And in many ways here, you'd expect and hope that Judy Dench would be the same with Madame Arcati here and Madame Arcati for the 21st century. Now, she plays the character of a rather unsuccessful medium. She's had no achievements in her medium career, as it were. She's been trying. She knows all the spells and potions. She's a member of the society. She's really trying to make it work, but there's been no success. She hasn't even been able to bring back the spirit of her late husband, who died in 1871. That's what, 60 odd years previously. But is she a fake or is she real? I think she genuinely believes that she is real. It's just that she's never had any success. And it's only when she brings back Elvira that she has her first level 10 achievement as a medium, not just bringing back a spirit, but someone you can see and engage with. One of the really odd elements of the story is that there is this physical love, and I mean physical love triangle between Charles, Ruth and Elvira. 
you know, he spends a night at the Savoy. That wasn't in Noel Coward's original. It's just mind boggling to some extent. It's meant to be quite funny, but I found that a bit on the weird side, a bit too weird to reconcile with. Now, one of the standout performances, and it's worth mentioning, we talked about the stars here, but there's Michelle Detrice turns up as as Edna, who's the cook. Now, Edna wasn't a character in the original stage production or the 1945 film. It's a new character for this film. You only see her in a couple of scenes, but the way she delivers a line, those kind of really sarcastic comments about Charles and Ruth. It's a shame we don't see more of her in the film, to be honest. Overall, I think Blythe Spirit from 2020, the current production, is a really fun, entertaining, enjoyable film. Yeah, it's great to sit for an hour and 35 minutes and watch it. It looks splendid. It's got a good cast, interesting performances, weak writing, and a rather blocky presentation of the story that you feel there are elements that are just placed side by side, but not really joined together with very much glue, very much cement. So it kind of lacks a kind of zest energy and pizzazz to take the story all the way through. It's a bit disappointing on the writing. I thought the direction could have brought out much more of the performances. We could have seen more dynamism, more energy in the presentation of the characters. The real stars of the film here are the backstage crew, the production design, location scouts, hair, makeup, the people who've made it look absolutely fantastic. The editing I thought was a bit questionable at times. The sequencing of certain elements I thought was a little bit out of place here and there, particularly when he sees Elvira for the first time, his reaction to that is a reaction that you would normally expect to see after you've seen what he's seeing in the first place, if that makes any sense. So it kind of felt a little bit out of sequence. But overall, it was fun and entertaining. A nice Sunday afternoon film that's going to make you chuckle here and there. But I suspect a missed opportunity. That's Blind Spirit, starring Dan Stevens, Isla Fisher, Leslie Mann, Judy Dench, directed by Edward Hall. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you can get a notification every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.